Hello and welcome back. In my first video on this subject, I showed an example of how to use substring. So I talked about some of the things that go wrong, how it works, etc. In this example, I'm going to show some more useful things that you can do with the substring function. And so just to review, I have a variable of type string. I initialized it to a, just some word. I picked baseball. Don't know why. I created another string, and this is basically where I store my results of my substring calls. And when I call the substring function, notice it's a member of the string class. So this is how I call it, right? I've got stuff. It is a string. So stuff.substring means I want to call the substring. And we passed it two arguments. So I passed it a 0 and a 3 in this example. So remember that substring starts counting at position 0. So this really means just give me the first three letters of a word. All right, and if this was only a two-letter word, this would be a problem because I'd be going past the end of the word. So extracting the first three letters of a word is pretty easy, right? This first value is obviously going to be zero, and this is going to be however many characters I want. If I wanted the first two characters, I'd write something like that. If I wanted the first five characters, I'd write something like that. But what if I want the last three characters? That's a problem, right? And I can't do that unless I have a little bit more information here because I don't know where to start. A word like baseball that's eight letters long, that would mean I wanted to start in spot five, right? But how do I, how do I get that? Well, it's not too hard. Uh, I'm gonna create a new variable. I'm gonna call it len, and I'm gonna call it an integer. And I'm going to initialize it to stuff.length. All right, stuff is a string, all right? And strings have a property or an attribute, which is length. And length is just how many characters are in that string. So if I want the last three characters, presumably this is gonna be the same. The difference is where do I wanna start? So if I wanted to start three from the end, well, I'd probably do something like len minus three, right? So for an eight letter word, like baseball, I'm going to subtract three, and that's going to give me spot five. I go to spot five, give me three more characters. That's going to be the last three characters in the string. So let me run it, and let's just make sure that it gives me back all. And it did. All right, so you'll notice that once we start using the length attribute, now we can start doing some more dynamic things. All right, we can take the last three, or uh, we can basically scale it to whatever word is passed in. So another example, all right, that's a pretty common one, that's a pretty useful one, and it's a, and using what we now know, we could override the starts with and ends with functions pretty easily. Um, let's say that we've got a word like baseball, and I wanna hack off the first letter, right? So I just wanna return ace ball, right? So kind of starting in spot one and going through spot seven. So how could I do that? So I guess you would say I wanna start in spot one, right, but how far do I go? I mean, do I want to go len? Do I want to go the length of the word? If you think about that, that's going to push me out of bounds because I'm starting on the second character. So what I would really want to do is len minus one. All right, so start at the second character and go as long as the word minus one. And there's no, I mean, this is kind of an arbitrary example, but everything I could possibly do is going to be an arbitrary example at this point. So I go result, and let's hope I get something like what I wanted. And notice how I hacked off the first letter. Right? If I wanted to hack off the first three letters, I'd probably need to do something like this and make an adjustment like that. If I don't account for it here, I'm going to go out of bounds, and things are going to crash. And I'm sure that if it worked before, it's going to work again. And it does. So really, just kind of take my word for it. If you are manipulating strings, you probably should be using substring. Um, there's a lot of other string functions out there, and really, you could create your own Im implementations of those functions by using probably not much more than a substring and an if. I am going to cover a couple more string functions just because they do come up pretty frequently. So keep checking back. Thanks for watching.